This is every build hack you need to try in Minecraft 1.20. Starting with this one using cherry wood. And while the trees definitely look great, if you take the wood by itself, it looks pretty ominous. And what we can do with that is if we mix together the cherry wood with a crimson stem, then when you place them all on top of something like Nylium, you'll notice we have the perfect thing to go together to create a really cool infected tree stem. Though I guess the only issue is that you couldn't build this in the actual nether since this wood would still burn, but you know, it's a dead tree. I guess that just makes it even deader. Now I wanna switch this over to a desert scene since I want you to see just how well the cherry leaves can actually work in this biome. And by just switching out your sandy floor for a couple of cherry leaves, we have the perfect thing for a really natural looking carpet. And best yet is that the cherry leaves actually don't change with the desert color map, unlike regular leaves. I think you can see which one looks better. Now, one of the most versatile blocks that got added in this update is the new hanging sign. And while it's pretty costly, since to craft one of these, you need six of the stripped logs and two chains, you do get some really cool looks out of this. Starting with, if we just lay down some trapdoors like this, and then a hanging sign underneath both of these legs, we get a perfect little picture picnic table. And I think in a desert setting like this, the bamboo trapdoor one looks particularly nice. Just, you know, make sure your friend doesn't come by and flip them up. It's not much of a table. You're really just taking an L. And while it's impossible to place these hanging signs by themselves, all we have to do is link them up to something like a trap door, and then we'll have the perfect thing for our little railroad crossing. Now, granted, it doesn't lift, so it's more of a railroad stopping. But because those hanging signs have collisions, they actually give us a great way to make little railings for our bridges. I love that bamboo placing sound. And now here's a tip if you're in creative. If you do control and middle mouse button to do the pick block. That'll copy the NBT data, and now you can place it on a whole row of these without having to type in the actual message, which gives us a great looking bridge and one that you can't fall off of. Both of those are appreciated. But what if we want to use our signs as, well, you know, signs? In that case, they actually work great mixing the hanging sign with the regular sign. All you have to do is place down two support blocks, your original sign on the bottom, and then a hanging sign over top, giving you seven lines of space to put together your perfect message. It just might be a little cropped if you type something on the top. Now, we've shown off this build hack in the past, but I actually think this is an even better implementation of it. You could use these hanging signs as a really convincing fallen bridge. And with the way that the chains actually connect these up, they have a collision box. I think this looks so much better than the sign design we've shown off in the past. But since I made this too small, it's really just more stopping you from going over the bridge. Though given the state the bridge is in, that might be for the best. My actual personal favorite use of these hanging signs so far is if we do something like this user did here. First, we're gonna have to build up into the sky. And then with a couple of these iron trap doors as fans, we can place blinking lights at the bottom. And finally, add in our hanging sign with the face design of your choice. And we got a little robot face. Just add in red dye and it's a lot more of an attack drone, which I would be angry too if someone came by and broke my buttons. Now, while it might be tough to track down the new armor trims, that doesn't mean that they're still not very useful for build hacks. So if you manage to get your hand on some of the Vex ones, then we can mix that together with our iron or netherite chest plates and get some really cool looking designs. Now what we want to do here is mix together the opposite color with each one. So the quartz with the netherite and the netherite with the iron, which when you put it together, Gives you a perfect little suit and tie. And I mean, the invite said black tie optional, so I hope that means pants are optional too. And we're not the only ones that armor trims look great on. Since if you were to dye a leather cap red and then add that together with a coast armor trim and some quartz, then when we step inside and put this on top of an armor stand, if we drop that into place on three layers of snow, we could push a block in and now we got a little book on our floor. And the real test to see if it works is to put other bookshelves around it. And even then, I still think it holds up. Plus we didn't have to torture any librarian villagers like we did in the past for the same effect. It's a point for humanity as well. Well. And for another update on an old design we've done in the past, we're gonna make an even better floating lantern than we've done before. Since by taking a light in the center, adding some banners around the sides, then all we have to do is attach one of the new hanging signs underneath. And because we can angle these 45 degrees, we can add in little flags hanging down from our lantern. And at that point, you can add in as many or as few as you want them to be. They'll even look great at nighttime. And visible too, in case you wanna tuck a hidden message above your friend's base. And speaking of a hidden message, probably the king of that is the new chiseled bookshelf. Now by itself, it doesn't really look like a bookshelf, it just looks like a shelf right right now. But if you lay out a few of these and start tucking in the books in the right places, you can actually use this as a form of pixel art. And while I wouldn't say it's exactly hidden when it's the only books placed in the case, if you add some other ones around it, then you can start to actually hide a message in here. Though if you build one of these, make sure you have a good leather farm, since just that little high message took me 34 of these books. Now with all the new types of bamboo that we have to play around with, such as the mosaic, the planks, and the actual stripped bamboo, it's a joy for building, and particularly in desert scenes. By just mixing these blocks together with some smooth sandstone like so we can get some really nice color palettes going on. And then you could even mix up the patterns like this, whether you're just doing something simple like a wall like this, or if you wanna go more out there with a pillar design like so, I think really any of these would work. And since with bamboo, we get ourselves a new wood type, that also means that we have a new bamboo pressure plate. But now if you were to do one of these, place down some raw fish and then a bamboo mat like so, you'll see that although it glitches out a bit, you got a perfect little sushi mat. Now in the past, we've recommended using hay bales for thatch roofs. And while they look great, they do have an ugly red band that goes around the side. And trust me, it's not 
not usual for me to put ugly and red in the same sentence. But to fix that, if we use something like the new bamboo wood, then this not only looks a lot cleaner, but it also gives us stair and slab variants to mess around with. Plus, different variants for the mosaic and the regular bamboo type. And at that point, the patterns can get really fun to play around with, even if what I built kind of looks like a straw hat. Now, when bamboo was first released, the first thing that many fans noticed is that it looks a lot like spaghetti, especially the mosaic block. So why don't we just embrace it? Since with an invisible item frame and a mosaic block like this, we can again put a heavy-weighted pressure plate over top, and we got ourselves some spaghetti noodles. Now, scaffolding can be an extremely useful block to use in your build, but useful and looking nice aren't always the same. Though, with just a few of these bamboo trap doors, we can really take our scaffolding and make it into something that you're okay with leaving up after the build. And plus, it'll still be functional. So even if your friend comes by and kicks out the bottom of the scaffolding, you'll still be safe on top of the actual bamboo. Now, because of the way the strip bamboo has its different directions, if we add in a few to our street setting here, we can get ourselves some really cool looking paving to add to our road. Which I've got to say, at this point, I prefer over the path block. At least I'm able to ride a boat over these without getting stuck. Whereas path blocks, that one pixel gap is all it takes to ruin it for you. Or if you wanted to, you could take your strip bamboo and face it towards you like this. So then when we add detail to the front, it really starts to look like a window block. Now, granted, you can't see through it, but that might be nice if you're trying to keep out passerby anyway. Now, in the past, we might have compared pink wool to cotton candy, but if you look inside of the strip cherry wood, I actually think that's a much nicer texture. It's a lot smoother than the original, that's for sure. And then, with an end rod as the stick, we can mix this together with a little cart and have a perfect cotton candy shop. And I think the pink wool looks a lot better as the awning than it ever did as the dessert. And with 1.20's new archaeology, we have plenty of these new decorated pots to, well, decorate with. I guess that much is obvious. And while you can't plant anything inside of these, they do only have a one block hitbox, despite what it might look like with this little lip here. So if you add on different kinds of pressure plates on top of them, we can get some cool trims or lids to our actual pot, which is way more than we've ever been able to do with the small one. And I think the one with the bamboo looks particularly nice here. Or you can bling it out with gold, but that seems a little excessive. Maybe if you want a gold chain on your urn, I don't know. And while it's still true that you can't plant anything inside of the decorated pots, if you add on a fence post like this and then some leaves out the top, then you not only got a plant inside of your pot, but it also fits it better than a regular sapling would. Seems a little teeny. Now, as this piglin's unfortunately gonna demonstrate, we cannot have piglins in the overworld. At least, not for very long. But with the new piglin head that we can get through charged creepers, then if you have a zombified piglin that can pick up loot and give it the head, or should I say dispense the head on top of it, then we'll have ourselves our own piglin in the overworld. You just might also want to give it a golden chest plate so it covers up some of the entrails. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what to do about the double ear situation on the side of its head, but at least it's only one side of its head, so maybe keep your pictures to its good side. And in the new cherry blossom biomes, you're gonna find a lot of these pink petals hanging around on the floor, which not only look great as is, but because we're able to put different amounts of them on the floor, we can also use these for some really convincing pixel art. And with how many you place down, you can basically change the line thickness too. So for all you digital artists, this is basically asking for you to create something cool, or at least cooler than whatever I was able to put together. Or if you want to use these same flower petals a little bit more practically, then because we're able to skew how many are in a certain area, we can make some really cool looking curved path design. And for someone who hates building the traditional paths with variety like so, I would much rather just randomly place these down and have something cool come out of it. And come on, who doesn't want to walk on flower petals? That just seems so romantic. I'm, get I'm single, so how do I know? Now, unlike in Zelda, these pots are actually pretty resilient and they don't fall, which weirdly enough means that we can use one of these to make ourselves a hot air balloon with a few chains connecting it up. And then of course the balloon part of your hot air balloon, place a candle perfectly in the hole and light it to fuel our hot air balloon. And then you can use a debug stick to connect these up to the pot. And there you go, ready for takeoff or stand still, whichever one you prefer, I guess. Now, while it's still true that we can only plant things inside of the regular flower pot, if we mix that together on top of our decorated pot like this, then it fits just right. The Textures match, and we can still plant our bamboo inside. Or if you want nothing to do with plants, then it's worth mentioning that the decorated pots look great when placed on top of each other like this. Now you got yourself a great looking brick pillar. Or if you wanted to, you can use some mud brick walls on the inside. And when they connect up to the wall next to them, I think this could look great for some of the new rooms that you want to build. Plus, you can add 20 different types of variety to the patterns that you add on top of these. It's either a decorator's fantasy or the worst nightmare. I'll let you choose. Now, with the new seeds that we're able to get from the sniffer, when you plant them down, you notice that they start out looking great, but when they grow up, they look look like they're an avatar reject. Another way to fix this for our pitcher pot is to place it down next to your potatoes and then place a string over top. So then no matter how much time or bone meal passes through it, it's never gonna grow up to be two blocks tall. And now you've got an overgrown potato to mix in with the rest of your patch. Just make sure you don't accidentally break the string while you're harvesting your other potatoes. Now there's so many things to do with armor trims that I'd be barely scratching the surface here. So let's rattle through a few of my favorites. And the first of those would be that if you took some of these new shaper armor trims and mixed it together with iron armor, then for the surprisingly high cost of 
3 netherite, you could have yourself the perfect set of stormtrooper armor. And honestly, even without arms, I'm sure they're as good of shots as regular stormtroopers anyway. And if you do the same steps with lapis lazuli, and instead just use a snout trim on your chest plate, then just like that, you've also got yourself a set of Clone Wars armor. And we're not the only ones who get to use the new armor trim, since if we go down here and summon in a few mobs that can pick up loot, then you'll notice that sure enough, we can also kit these out in the different kind of armor trims as well, which might just be too costly to give them in survival, but for map makers, this can make for some really cool super mobs. If we take a set of red leather armor and then add an eye trim to the helmet as well as the boots, we can then also add a tide trim to our leggings and finally a wild armor trim to our chest plate until sure enough, we've officially given ourselves the full Iron Man treatment. And I mean, come on, doesn't that just look so cool? With the changes to bamboo, we also now have a new kind of bamboo boat or raft, I should say. And what makes this better than a regular boat is that if you were to place down enough snow layers like so, stacking up four high, then when you put the raft into place, we can cover up the rest of it with carpet like this so that when you sit in the raft, it looks like you're sitting on the carpet. Or in my case, it looks like I'm melting into the carpet. So maybe choose a different color. We're also not the only ones who can ride these things, which means that if you get it just right, we can now use these bamboo rafts as a new kind of mob display case. Or in the chicken's case, it doesn't seem like it likes it very much. So maybe it's more of a mob torture chamber. I don't think this is how they prefer their bamboo. Now, while it might get confusing trying to figure out which one's the bamboo mosaic and which one's the bamboo planks, you're gonna wanna learn the difference. Since when you put them together in a floor like this, you can start to make some really cool crisscross shapes in the pattern. Now you got yourself a perfect little bamboo mat or, or dance floor, I don't judge, but society does. <laughs> and that's not to say there isn't a use for the actual green bamboo as well. Since if we were to go over to desert and mix this in with your regular cactus, then we can actually get a pretty convincing looking fake cactus here. And you can also plant little things on top of it, giving us cactus fruit. And at this point, I well prefer this over the competition. Sorry. All right, the next one I was told is a surprise, so. Up. Yep, still ate surprises. But unfortunately for all of us, these bamboo blocks look a little too close to faded yellow wallpaper. And what I'll also mention is that if you use some of the bamboo signs and don't type anything on top of them, then with the horizontal lines that they have on top, they look pretty good for vents. And now I'm just wondering how you're supposed to no clip out of the back rooms. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, I'm not normally someone who likes to build with a lot of birch in my builds, but with the advent of bamboo, you can actually mix the two of these together to where it looks like the birch is sort of a faded version of the bamboo. And at that point, it looks really nice. Just make sure that you get the pattern and amounts down right. But that only covers the build hacks that you're able to do with blocks. And 1.20 also added in new mobs, like the sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this was too good to pass up on. I mean, come on, we've even got the little rascal and the tough golem in here, which is more than Mojang did in this update. Tough golem's even functional. But jokes aside, there actually is a use for the sniffer inside of this new update. You're just gonna have to use the right command. Since if you're playing in creative and you summon in a sniffer with the no AI tag, then you'll notice that you'll have this great bush texture to play around with. And a signature sniffer sticking out too. But if you cover that up with another sniffer, we can really start to layer these and get some pretty cool looking bushes. And if you add in this age tag like this, you can get a little baby sniffer as well. Just be careful, because if you place these a little bit too close to the floor, yeah, you might have a dead bush instead of a living one. Moving on. Now, archaeology is a huge part of this update, but the brush itself is actually a pretty nice texture to play around with. So much so that if you were to get yourself an armor stand and then use something like the Vanilla Tweaks data pack to give it arms and pose it right, then we could give it a brush and some cobwebs and essentially create our very own cleaning crew. Just don't expect them to work very fast. They're used to not doing much. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.